Hello and welcome to NAFDAQ and Your Health, where we bring you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ. The agency saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding our health by ensuring that the foods, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. My name is Tosin Adebayo. Last week, we began our expose on the importance of breastfeeding to not just the health of infants, but to the overall good of the nation, because healthy children are the bedrock of a prosperous nation. Today, we continue that expose in commemoration of the International Breastfeeding Week, and to that, NAVDAC engaged several stakeholders on the subject, starting with the Director General of NAVDAC, Professor Mujisola Adeyeye. She responded to the question of how well Nigeria is doing with exclusive breastfeeding. We are doing better. Uh, we could do much, much better, of course, in terms of breastfeeding. Sometimes I wonder why it is even an issue. Uh, breastfeeding is supposed to be normal for a child. We were breastfed for more than two and a half years, my own generation. And some of the illnesses that are afflicting the younger generations are not afflicting us. Uh, of course, other illnesses may come in because of one, other, one factor or the other. But we were breastfed because our parents know that it is primary responsibility to give that child a good start in life. Breast milk comes with a lot of immune factors that could prevent illnesses in the future. Again, a child can be ill. Malaria, if a child is bitten by, mal by mal mosquito, the child can have malaria, things like that. But in terms of making sure that the foundation is good, it is breast milk. Uh, our parents were mostly agrarian, at least my own generation which means they can take, they, they can do breastfeeding at any time. But now that we are young, you know, the younger generations have to go to work, they can still breast, make, breastfeed. My own children breast, you know, breastfeed their children, uh, despite the fact they are working. Because you can still pump the milk and put it in a bottle, take it to daycare. This is reality. Not many parents are staying at home again, unlike our own parents that are agrarian, they go to the farm, you know, but the child is always there with them. But the most important thing is to focus on the milk. So long as that child gets the milk, the breast milk, uh, the best thing is to, of course, breastfeed. If you're at home, there are some parents that don't work or that have kiosks in front of their houses and whatnot, they can breastfeed very well. If you go back, come back from work, you can breastfeed. But if you are not there, the first thing is not formula. It's expressed milk from the breast. And why is that so important? I've said it. We are laying a good foundation in terms of healthy, uh, the health of that child. So it shouldn't be a problem. Our parents have something that they, they, they were handed over to by the other you know, ancestors and so on. But somehow we don't seem to understand that breast milk is the best. Uh, does that mean that a child cannot be given a bottle? If the mother is very ill, there is nothing you can do. But that, these are all exceptions. It's not the rule. You know, if, 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 even with coronavirus, the mother can cover herself up with mask and still breastfeed. They have not seen any coronavirus in breast milk. So unless the mother is very, very ill, then uh, the, 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 an alternative can, can, can be given. But this, this is an exception, not the rule. Uh, so I... Somehow I don't know why it has become so difficult for young mothers uh, to think of alternative. 
if it is cosmetics. God didn't bring, give us a breast for cosmetic sake. It is so that our own children can be healthy. You know, uh, so if somebody is thinking cosmetics, think of holistic approach to life. Uh, you will look down 30 years after and you say, oh, the so-called cosmetics, where are they now? From the evidence that we have, uh, we generate data, routine data, and also our data on a regular basis. So the most reliable that we have always been quoting is the National Demographic Health Survey, which was done the last, it was done about five years ago. And currently we are preparing for the next round of the National Demographic Health Survey. So from the rec most recent one, it's, uh, it places Nigeria at 29%, which means that um, looking at the general population of women that uh, deliver babies and are expected to breastfeed, only 29% of mothers properly and exclusively breastfeed their babies within the first six months of night, which means more than 70% are not doing. But when you ask them, they will say, oh, we do breastfeed, but are you properly breastfeeding? And when we say proper, it means proper exclusive breastfeeding without any additions, except medically indicated, no water. The baby is only on breast milk for the first six months of life, which is initiated immediately. And thereafter, you continue the breastfeeding with other food supplement to complement it up to two years. And this is what we define as the proper feeding of a, of, of a baby. Uh, so we have over 70% that are not doing it correctly. Maybe as a result of uh, misinformation, lack of guidance by the health workers, or maybe family pressure and also peer, and uh, a lot of misconception of belief that uh, we cannot, I cannot do it. Meanwhile, every other woman will be able to breastfeed, even if uh, there are multiple uh, deliveries, let's say twins, or quadruplets, mothers should be supported to breastfeed. The older mothers or relatives will have to come in because sometimes a young mother may not have experience. If he doesn't come, oh, he doesn't come. So I will just use bottle. You have to, especially immediately after bath, you have to keep giving it to the child. The child will draw it out later. But again, the mother is supposed to be the focus. You cannot ration food for a child, for a mother. A mother that doesn't have money to feed herself cannot be a good producer of breast milk. So the mother has to be, uh, the people around have to know that if a child needs this milk, then the mother has to be taken care of. A lot of water, a lot of vegetable, excuse me, fruits, you know, uh, because those are the things that will make the mother to lactate. And of course, peace of mind. The mother shouldn't be asked, go and start cooking. Go and start. The, mother, the, the fathers have to support. The fathers don't support. The mother will not have peace of mind to even, you know, produce the milk as supposed to be. So it's very, it has to be very holistic. It's a family thing. Breastfeeding is of such tremendous value, not only to the infants, to the infant, the mother, the father, the family, the community, the nation, the health sector. Everybody benefits by promoting, supporting, and advocating for optimal infant and young child feeding practices. We start with breastfeeding. Now, breastfeeding should start as soon as the baby is born. That is called early initiation. Now, that early initiation of breastfeeding has some values to the baby and to the mother. For the baby, the breast milk contains a lot of immunoglobulins, macrophages, and vitamins. So when you get the baby to suckle that first milk called colostrum, it lines the immunoglobulins, macro those special protective agents in the milk line the gut and protect the baby from infections. They also stimulate the baby's gut to empty more freely and they clear the gut, helping the baby to protect the baby against things like neonatal jaundice. Now that early it helps with the bonding, helping the baby to be attached to the mother. It also helps the mother 
to initiate and sustain breastfeeding helps her to expel her placenta readily and protects against postpartum hemorrhage that is bleeding after delivery. So it has a lot of values. Now for the child from birth to six months, when we recommend exclusive breastfeeding, that is giving a child no other food or drinks except medical indicated but breast milk. That period of giving only breast milk, which you call exclusive breastfeeding period, which is, should last for six months, the breast milk provides all the food and water the baby needs. Even in a hot, dry climate, it gives the child all the food and drinks the baby needs. So for the baby, it provides the best nutrients because the milk is human milk. It blends with the nutrients the baby's brain, the system needs to develop optimally. So it stimulates growth and development of the baby. The breast milk contains immunological agents, that is special soldiers, macrophages, uh, immunoglobulins, there are special agents in the breast milk that help to fight against infections. That is why babies that are breastfed are protected against the common killer diseases like pneumonia, diarrhea, and other diseases. And breast milk provides the best possible nutrition for any child. So it protects against malnutrition. Currently in Nigeria, we know that malnutrition is at the background of the death of about 45% of children in the first five years of life. So if mothers are supported and encouraged to breastfeed, we can bring down the burden of malnutrition, which contributes to the death of our children. Breast milk stimulates intellectual development. So the children's intellectual ability is better. They perform better and their intelligent quotients academically in, and in other areas. For the baby too, it protects against some diseases in addition to the ones I've talked about. Long-term effects like protecting against obesity, uh, diabetes mellitus, lymphomas, and other long-term diseases. So it is really a very important thing to invest in breastfeeding the babies. We've not talked about the benefits to the mother or other family members. NAFDAQ and your health will be right back. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, you're watching NAFDAQ and your health. NAFDAQ plays a vital role in the regulation of breast milk substitutes and enforcement of the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes. This code guides its regulatory activities. This International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes are sets of recommendations by World Health Assembly, that is WHO, to regulate the marketing of infant formula, any breast milk substitutes anything that replaces breast milk. And the responsibility of NAVDAC is to ensure that these products, are the, their marketing are controlled. They are only used when they are needed. And if they are needed, it is supposed to be given by a medical personnel. And um, mothers are supposed to be encouraged to be supported and to be protected to breastfeed their babies optimally. And we realize that aggressive marketing of these infant food manufacturers undermines the confidence of mothers to breastfeed optimally. So for that is the reason why the marketing of breast milk substitutes is not like the same marketing of other products, that you can produce your products, go to the media, go to the market, do it on the billboard to advertise your products. So for that reason, market, infant food manufacturers are expected to abide by the provisions of the code. And uh, NAVDAC is saddled with that responsibility. However, it's not only NAVDAC, every relevant stakeholder, including the healthcare system, the healthcare workers, the media like you, the traditional uh, rulers of the communities, the community leaders, the, the, even the, the infant manufacturers themselves, they have roles and responsibilities as stipulated in the provisions of the court. So all of us need to know our roles and we need to do our roles effectively to protect, promote and support breastfeeding. However, WHO recommends that a child should be placed on, on his own breast, on the, mother, the breast of his mother within one hour of childbirth. And 
that is the quality initiation and it should be exclusively breastfed for six months however it is recommended that after six months adequate complementary feeding should be introduced preferably from the family menu you make it platable for the baby to take and then you continue breastfeeding until two years and beyond so the complementary feeding can be prepared from the family menu to encourage mothers not to patronize any commercial uh, commercially it doesn't have to be commercial baby foods it can be prepared from the family menu however if you cannot do that you may find other means but have to continue breastfeeding the child for six months so the code actually is controlling both the infant uh, formula and, and even the complementary foods they should not be promoted or should they should not be marketed to mothers they should, be, they should not be marketed to healthcare system and they should not be supported. Any manufacturer should not support the activities of the healthcare system. There is no sponsorship for their meetings. There should be no sponsorship for any uh, healthcare worker, for any training or for any uh, additional qualifications to avoid conflict of interest. Because if you any any anybody that supports you in anything you dance to their tune so for the sake of the child of nigeria health workers are supposed to abide by the provisions of the code and avoid conflict of interest the code prohibits um promotion of products products i mean giving of samples to mothers they're not supposed to give samples of their product to mothers they're not supposed to display posters or cards that has the products or their company's logo in the hospitals. So they are not supposed to perform educational functions. Manufacturers of these products are not supposed to perform educational, um, for provide information with respect to the product to mothers. They are not supposed to educate them. So generally that in the general public these products are not supposed to be advertised in the televisions you know that the trending thing is social media they're not supposed to be seen in any social media websites facebook youtubes they're not supposed to be there in the retail shops that's what it's a no-no for promotion of this product in retail shops like having a special display of the products or having some a discount of these products in the shelves the advantages of exclusive breastfeeding goes far beyond the benefits to the child, but reaches to the family and indeed the nation. Breastfeeding is cost effective. You know, an average child who has to take formula will require like uh, 45 things in a month, in six months. Now, that 45 things at current price of about three to 4,000 a month you know how much it comes to that's about 135,000 naira in six months to buy the product alone and uh, that amounts to about um, maybe 22 23,000 naira a month so it is far above the minimum wage of many fans that's just buying the product you have to look for fuel you have to look for utensils you have to look for water to prepare the meal and in addition you have to pay the bills of seeing doctors with repeated uh, respiratory tract infection uh, diarrhea and other illnesses that will follow the use of infant formula so the cost the family saves is in the cost of buying milk cost of time to prepare it cost of treatment of the disease that will follow those and cost of death of the child because use of infant formula is associated with 17 times small risk of the child dying in the first two months of life than a baby that is being breastfed. Then it bonds the bonding between the child and the mother and the other member is also high because the father, the mother, every member of the family can take part in the breastfeeding process. The father can breathe give the mother a lot of support. He can also feed the express breast milk with a cup and spoon to the baby. Now it protects the mothers against breast cancer and ovarian cancer. It helps her to regain her weight soon after delivery. It also protects her against another pregnancy coming too soon. What they call lactational amenorrhea. Menstruation will not come so long as the mother is exclusively breastfeeding eight to 12 times day and night. 
right and uh, feeds the baby like that for so it serves as a family planning method protects the mother against cancers helps her to reduce the risk of bleeding after delivery and reduces the risk of anemia because for the six months she's breastfeeding exclusively and for some mothers longer she will not menstruate so she can conserve her blood so you can see that both for the mother and the family it has a lot of gains then for the country we do not lose the money we are using to import the infant formula the money that uh, the environmental degradation resulting from the cutting down of um, wood for preparing the formula then the contamination by cow dung and other things that emit carbon and lead to climate change. So it protects, it saves money, it reduces debt and improves its overall socioeconomic development of the nation. Government is working to encourage the creation of safe places for nursing mothers in Nigeria. Yes, government uh, approach is that um, Breastfeeding should be made, every environment, workplaces should be made friendly for mothers to be able to breastfeed exclusively for the first six months of life. So a uh, part of what we are doing in that is on policy issues in the workplaces to support women have six months on a maternity leave. And the main reason for that is to allow them to breastfeed exclusively for six months. Some states are already doing it. We are still advocating for the federal government to do that. Then uh, another aspect of it is in the workplaces, because women are also working, whether in a formal sector or informal sector. The private sector is also an integral part of it, because a huge number of women are also working in the private sector, whether formal or informal, including marketplaces. So what we advocate is there should be creatures where women cannot stay at home for six months, they have to work. There should be creatures available to them that will provide, uh, exclusively available, that will provide privacy and confidentiality. So women can continue to breastfeed and at the same time, uh, uh, continue to do their work and be productive at their workplaces or they can also close early. So we are partnering with a lot of uh, government agencies and also private sector to ensure that every workplace have a secluded area where women will be able to come along with their babies to their workplaces and uh, ensure that they continue to breastfeed. Beyond these, NAFDAC takes the message of breastfeeding Ceres and ensures it is circulated far and wide, including to the next generation of parents. This week is the um, World Breastfeeding Week. We are talking to people on exclusive breastfeeding. And after seven, most of you want to get married. So we are trying to let people know that the first six months of life, you must exclusively breastfeed your child. No water, nothing, just breast. And even for the guys, you will be men, you will think that was my business. You will marry and you have a wife. You have to encourage your wife to exclusively breastfeed your child. The small six months of life is just ordinary breast, no water. And you know, statistics have shown that people that do it, the children come out healthy. So we take, you know, exceptions to marketing uh, breast milk substitutes because we don't want anybody to promote anything that is not exclusive breastfeeding. You must exclusively, you say, it's not that you have to encourage your wife because, you know, it will help to fight against infant mortality. It's very important, it's convenient for the mother if you know, maybe you will resume work before the six months. You express your breast. The more you express, the more you will produce the breast milk. And your child will be healthy. And even you, you know, will see the reason for doing it. The child will be healthy, will be intelligent. And the immunity will be very strong to fight any infant uh, disease. And that's our package for today. Please join us same time, same station next week for a fresh edition. In the meantime, if you have comments, complaints, or you want to report activities of fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, 
Our doors are always open. You can reach NAFTA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. You may also email NAFTA at nafdaq.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the reforms unit via email reforms at nafda.gov.ng or call the reforms hotlines on 0909-763-0506 or 0909-763-0506. NAFDAQ, customer focused, agency minded. Importing, producing, distributing, and selling fake drugs and cosmetics, adulterated food, and so on are criminal activities that destroy lives. Join the fight against these heinous crimes by reporting any suspicious activities in your area to NAFDAQ. Let's join hands to safeguard the health of our nation. See you next week. Stay safe.